and welcome to part one of the Betsy Duster cardigan crochet along. I am so excited to get started. As you can see, I'm wearing mine now. But there's a few things you need to know before we get started. Okay, first thing, this video is not meant to replace the actual written pattern for the Betsy Duster cardigan. It's meant to supplement it for people who are more visual learners. Um, in order to get the pattern, just go ahead and click the link in the description box and you will find it there on my blog, The Yarn That Binds Us. And this goes for every other uh, video that is to come in the next few weeks, um, you will still need the written pattern from the blog in order to understand what step to do next and the exact stitch count. Okay, second thing uh, is the materials. You need to know what materials to use. I used Lion Brand's Pound of Love yarn. You could probably get away with, depending on the size you're making, Probably get away with just using one skein unless you wanted to use multiple colors in that case you would need to buy each color in each skein you won't you most likely won't be using all of of the each skein in all the different colors you're using however each skein is a thousand and twenty yards so really this is plenty um, for most of the sizes. You can check more accurate yardages in the written pattern for the size you're wanting to make. Next thing you're going to need is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook or the size used to obtain gauge. More on that in a little bit. But this is my suggested size. This is what I used for mine. We're gonna need two other things that you normally don't need. Um, one being 10 millimeter sequins, which I'll talk about later on in this video. And you'll also need a 25 millimeter or US 50 size knitting needle like this. As you can see, I'm working on my drop stitch, my new drop stitch skirt here with this one. Um, and once you have all of those things, plus scissors and a tapestry needle or a yarn needle or a darning needle, whichever needle of your choice, um, once you have all those things, you are ready to begin. Um, okay, last thing is before you actually start crocheting, you need to... I'm so distracted with this. <laughs> you must not skip doing the gauge swatch. It may end up being smaller or it may end up being bigger if you do not make sure you're using the right hook for your tension for this pattern. So please, pretty please, do the gauge swatch before you start part one. Once you've done all that, we can get started on part one of the Betsy Duster cardigan crochet along. Here we go. All right, now that we have all of our materials, the first thing we're going to do is start on the bodice. Before we can actually start crocheting, we're going to need to thread on our sequins. I'm going to show you that really quick. Um, you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to put the yarn you're using for the bodice thread it um, into the eye. I don't tie a knot um, because it, it won't be able to go through the sequin if you tie a knot. But if you leave a, a big, a long enough tail, it will be able to thread um, just fine without coming out. Um, so you can do this one at a time, just like so, very easily. And then you just thread it 
all the way down. I already did most of my sequins, as you can see there. Um, for this pattern, you're probably going to want to thread about 200 sequins. Depending on your si the size you're making, um, it could be a lot less than 200. Um, for the extra large, I think it was about 170 sequins that I used. Um, but you'll find that putting more on um, is a lot safer than uh, <clears throat> it's a lot less riskier. Okay, um, so you can do one at a time just like I showed you, or what I like to do is I like to thread on the needle. One, two, three, four, five, and then I use something sturdy, like a table. Shh. And I thread all five of them at once and that usually gets the job done quicker it is a little tedious to do at first but um, what I was going to say before was if you do not thread enough sequins in the beginning while you're crocheting um, you will have to cut your yarn off to add more so it's best if you just put them all on in the beginning and you know crochet with them as you go I will talk about the sequins that I get. I get this pack by Createology. Um, I find this at Michael's. Um, usually, a lot of the times, these are on sale at stores. Sequins aren't very, I should I, that I know of, very popular anymore. Um, so they're usually really cheap. This comes in three different sizes. But um, if you, for some reason, don't have a pack that looks like this at your store or you go or you have a different store in town that you go to, you're really going to want to look for the 10 millimeter sequins. Those are the size that I'm using for this project and the hole in the middle is going to be able to fit on the needle and more importantly, fit on this medium weight yarn. Um, yeah, anything bulky, bulkier. Uh, then medium weight is just not going to work with sequins. Um, the other two sizes I have here, maybe a fingering weight or a crochet thread you could use with this, with these sizes, but um, not for a medium uh, yarn. So there you go. There's that. And now that we have all of our sequins started, we can take our tapestry needle off, save that for later when we're weaving in our ends. And now we just create a slip knot. And for all sizes, we are chaining 78. So one, two, three, all right, so I now have my chain 78. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over and half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. Okay, and this pattern is a raglan style. Okay. And this pattern is a raglan style pattern, so we're going to be increasing um, to make the armholes. And I'll show you how that's done here. So if you read row number one, the next step is to half double crochet in each of the next eight chains. So let's do that. Why is this? Oh my gosh. So slow it does right now.
So here is my nine half double crochet. Remember we did the first one and the third chain jump from the hook. And now we are going to three half double crochet in the next chain. So this is our increase. So one, two, three. So how this is going to lay out is this is going to be one front panel. We're going to half double crochet in the next 18 chains, increase again, half double crochet in the next 18 chains, increase again, half double crochet in the next 18 chains, and increase again, and then we're going to end with nine half double crochet. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, and we'll come back to the next row. Okay, and now we are all done with our first row. We have our four increases in the corners here. And this is actually going to make up our neckline. This will be the back of the <clears throat> cardigan. And this, when we fold over our increases, going to look like something like this. So this will eventually be the armhole. Obviously it's too small right now, but that's why we're going to continue to increase on those corners. And as we increase, something you'll notice with each row, here we started with nine stitches, then it's going to go up by one. So on the short ends, these two right here. So our next row, it's going to be 10 and then three double three stitches in one. And then the longer ends are actually going to increase by two stitches. So instead of 18 from the first row, it's going to be 20. Another thing you'll notice is that the long sides are always going to be double the short sides. So just like in row one, we had nine stitches, our long sides are 18. 18, 18, 9. When we go to the next row, it's going to be 10, 20, 20, 20, 10. So it does, even though there are a lot of things involved with the raglan, it is very predictable math-wise, very easy to keep track of your stitches. All right, so let's start on the next row. So first, we are going to chain one, and turn, or sorry, <laughs> we are going to turn and chain one. Not even sure if that really matters, but that's what we're doing, following the pattern. Okay, now it says double crochet in each of the first two half double crochet. And now we are going to sequin, sequin double crochet in the next half double crochet. Now this row is the only row we're going to be using the sequin double crochet stitch. For the rest of the bodice pattern, we will only be doing um, sequin half double crochet. So let me show you how this goes. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook in the stitch, we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, we should have three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops just like you normally would and right here we're going to stop. We're going to take our sequins, we're going to pull just one of them all the way up here and we're going to hold that right in front and the front of the work. So right now we're working on the back. We're going to hold that right here. What I like to do is I like to hold my my um, sequin in place with my fingers on this side and even um, or I guess I should say this on this hand my left hand so we're gonna keep that in place there yarn over behind the sequin and pull through the last two loops and now your sequin is attached you can see that there and there you go all right, that's our sequin double crochet. All right, so we have our double crochet 
sequin stitch done. The next step is to double crochet in the next two half double crochet. So we'll do that. One, two, oops. and then another sequin double crochet again, yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and pull up a sequin. I do have a video, YouTube video, I will put a link in the description box to show you a more in-depth tutorial on sequin, how to use sequins, how to crochet with sequins. Um, so if you are, if you want me to slow down a little bit, you can just go ahead and um, check out that video. For now, we're just going to try to get through this as quick as possible um, for time's sake. So now we have our two, and once we finish that, it says we're actually going to be doing that sequence twice. So the two double crochet and the sequin double crochet, we do it twice. So we've done it once, and we're going to do it one more time. One. Two. And sequin double crochet. And there we are. So there it is. We've done that twice. Double crochet in the next double crochet. As you can see, we are now at the increase from the last row. And it says to double crochet in the next one. And now we are going to increase. One thing that you're going to notice is we always increase in the center of the, th the group of three, or the second stitch of the group of three. So three double crochet in the next stitch. One, two, three. So we should have 10. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and our increase. So we're on the right track. Okay. Now, our next step, we have another um, group of parentheses. So it says sequin double crochet in next stitch, double crochet in the next two half double crochet six times. So All right, so we're gonna sequin double crochet. And then two double crochet. We're gonna do that six times. So there's one. two. So we can flip this over and kind of look at our sequins. I, this is one of my favorite parts is looking at the sequins. They look pretty cool. I like to flip them since this is the top right here. I like to flip them down because that's how you want them to look. Okay, so go ahead and finish that um, section and we'll come back All right, so I have finished that sequence one, two, three, four, five, six times. And the next step says to sequin double crochet in the next half double crochet. As you can see again, we are at the increase. So sequin and sequin double crochet. <clears throat> Oh, 
All right. And then double crochet in the next stitch and So double crochet in the next stitch and three double crochets in the next one after that. So again, to double check, that should be <clears throat> for the long side here. It should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 stitches total and three double crochet for the increase. All right. So basically, if you follow along with the instructions for row two, um, you're going to have this a very similar um, sequence. So we are going to double crochet in the next stitch and then we are going to have that same sequence, the sequin double crochet in the next half double crochet and then double crochet in the next two half double crochet. Just like this last um, long side. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have finished that sequence six times once more. Our next step is to sequin double crochet. And then three double crochet in the next stitch. One, Two, three. All right, and then we're just going to follow along for the rest of the row two um, with the pattern. Um, it's the same idea as what we've already done when you get to the end um, after the last, the fourth increase it's going to be very similar we're going to have 10 stitches total after the last increase so let's go ahead and finish that and come right back all right we've finished row two and now we're ready to move on to row three um, before you move on, I do suggest you look at the total stitch counts at the end of row two and just count how many sequin double crochets you have, how many double crochets you have. Make sure it all adds up to the 92 uh, stitch total. Um, and if everything adds up, then I would feel comfortable moving along. And raglans, it's very important that you don't miss any stitches, otherwise you may get stuck. Um, and having to frog a lot of your work so i do really do <laughs> i really do suggest you check your stitch counts all right row three we're going to turn and we're going to chain one and now we are just going to half double crochet um no fancy stitches in this row um but we are going to like i said continue increasing on those um, four corners. So if you remember our last row, our short sides were 10 and our long sides were 20 <clears throat> stitches. So that means it's going to be one more for the short sides, so 11. So yarn over, one, Half double crochet, two, 
tree. All right, there's 11. We are now at the center here, as you can see. And this is where we're gonna add our three half double crochet for the increase. One, two, three. And now instead of 20, we're gonna have 22 half double crochet for the long sides. I'll get started on that. Okay, we have 22 there. We're again at our center stitch and we're going to three half double crochet to increase. All right, so now I'm gonna leave you to it for the rest of the row three. It's going just to be the same uh, sequence. The long sides are gonna be 22. Um, and then the last short end will be 11. All right, come back when you're finished. All right, we have now finished row three. Again, I would just check that your um, total half double crochet count at the end of the row is correct. And then we can start on row four. I'm actually gonna move the camera down here. makes it easier for me. I'm short. I can't <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing when it's that high. All right. Row 4, we're going to so actually row 3 we turn and row 4 we chain 1. And it says double crochet and first half double crochet. So this is the row where we're going to start skipping stitches and chain one. So we get that lacy look. So double crochet in first, half double crochet, chain one, skip next half double crochet, and now we have a sequence um, with the parentheses, double crochet and next half double crochet, chain one, and skip next half double crochet. And we're gonna do that sequence five times. All right, so that's one. Two. Three. Four. And five. 
And then that brings us to the center stitch here because we are skipping this stitch, which means we do our three double crochet increase next. As you can see, it's a little bit of a struggle with these sequins on your yarn. You, you can get all caught up in them while you work, but it's worth, in my opinion, it's worth it to get this final look with the sequins. All right, so there's our increase. <clears throat> and now it's got a, another sequence. So it says chain one, skip next half double crochet, double crochet and next half double crochet, and we do that 12 times. So chain one, skip next one, double crochet. There's one, two, three, Four, five, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, and twelve is right here. All right, so there we go. So counting the skip stitches again, the long side should be twenty four, um, but you're technically only doing 12 double crochet because we are skipping the stitches in between and of course on this end we would be at 12 right the short stitches the short sides um, but we only have six double crochet <clears throat> all right back to where we were we're now at our center stitch which means we do our three double crochet increase. And my sequins have caught up to me again. Let's see. Two and three. All right. So just like before, the sequins are pretty much the same. So we have the 24 stitches here, um, but we're going to be, again, just, we're going to be skipping in between the double crochets and chain with chain ones. Um, so there should be another 12 double crochet, another 12 double crochet, and another six double crochet here. Go ahead and finish row four, and we'll come back for row five. Okay, so we have done our three double crochet increase. And then it says, repeat from star two more times. So if you noticed in the beginning of that sequence with the parentheses, there was a star in the beginning. So all this means is you're going to repeat the double crochet, skip chain ones 12 times, as well as the increase. So you're just going to do that whole sequence two more times which makes sense if you look at what you have left right so you would do one and then two and once you do that the next sequence is to do the six double crochet with the skipped in between and the chain ones all right so let's finish that and we'll come back and look at what we have um, for row five next. All right, so this is what we should have after row four. 
as you can see it's starting to get a little bit lacy with those chain ones and skip stitches and um, what we're going to be doing now with row five is really starting um, the repeat um, that we're going to use throughout the rest of this body bodice pattern. Um, these first four rows really um, kind of set up the repeat, so um, it's not exactly the repeat. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and start on row four next. Or sorry, let's go ahead and start on row five next. All right, we are now on row five and we have turned and we will be doing a chain one and now we are going to double crochet in the first double crochet and our first sequence comes up with the parentheses double crochet and next chain one space and double crochet and next double crochet and we're going to do those two things six times so there is one okay, two three Four. And as you can see, we've ended up again where our increase is, and it does say to three double crochet in the next double crochet. Perfect. All right, and now we're going to do be doing a sequence for the long sides and it starts off with <clears throat> okay double crochet and next double crochet and then we follow parentheses it says double crochet and next double crochet double crochet and next chain one space and we're going to do that 12 times one All right, so we've done that 12 times. And we are now going to double crochet in the next double crochet. And three double crochet in the next double crochet. Again, here we are at the center stitch. Perfect. All 
Okay, the next set of instructions says repeat from star two more times. That brings us back to that double crochet and the next double crochet and then the sequence we do 12 times. So let's go ahead and repeat from star two more times and we will go ahead and also finish the short end side as well to bring us um, to row six next. All right, so we are now finished with row five and you should have something that looks a little bit like this. One thing I do want to talk about before we continue on is you really should have your measuring tape handy um, just to measure to make sure your gauge is on track. So what I like to do personally is measure the back of the bodice. So we have the two front panels would be here. Again, remember when you fold this over, this is going to be your armhole. So if we just flip this back like this, we could measure from center of the three double crochet groups or half double crochet groups to the other side and just make sure that we're not going past our measurement that we need. The measurement that you're looking for is half of your chest measurement because the chest measurement would technically be around the bodice, but it would be half for the back. So for instance, the extra large um, is a 44 inch chest measurement. So the back needs to be 22 inches long before we can join the armholes. So as you can see, I don't know if you saw before, we're about nine inches right now, nowhere near 22 inches. Um, this is actually close to um, an 18 month size measurement for the back. Um, obviously the uh, neckline is a way too big for that baby size, but um, that we, we're way off. Um, not even close yet. So, you know, just every once in a while when you start getting close to joining the armholes for your size, just make sure you measure the back. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and start row six. So we're, like I said before, we're gonna start um, doing more of a repeat now. And the repeat is gonna start with row six. Row six is the sequin half double crochet row. So remember we did the sequin double crochet here, but for now on it's going to be sequin half double crochet. So the row starts, um, row five you turn at the end and then row six you chain one, half double crochet in first two double crochet, one, two, and now sequin half double crochet and next double crochet, half double crochet and next two double crochet four times. And this is how we're going to do the sequin half double crochet. Yarn over, insert hook into stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have three loops. Now instead of the sequin double crochet where we would pull through two loops first, because the half double crochet requires us to yarn over through all three on the hook from here, we're actually going to pull our sequin in now. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. And now you have a sequin half double crochet. Pretty simple. All right, let's finish the sequence half double crochet and next two double crochet. One, two. That's one. So it says to do that sequence four times. That means we have to do it three more times. So 
sequin half double crochet. Again, if you do not have the pattern, go ahead and click the link in the description box to get the written pattern. It's so much easier to follow along with this video and actually impossible to create this without it. So <laughs> again, this is really just a video that you would follow along. So there's your sequin half double crochet two half double crochet. All right, and now I'm gonna go into full speed just to get to the next step. All right, so there we are. We should have four sequin half double crochets. And we are now left with that center stitch of the three double crochet group, which means we need to three half double crochet in that stitch to increase. There we go. All right, to speed up this video, <clears throat> I went ahead and off video did two more rows. So we were here, I believe. And now I have, I'm up to row seven. So row six was just a sequin half double crochet row. Real quick, I'm gonna show you how to do the sequin half double crochet, but I'm not gonna go into specifics about the whole row just to save time in this video. And of course, you can see row seven was just the um, chain one, skip, and then double crochet, um, which was pretty much the same as this row. Just, um, you know, obviously check the written pattern for the increases, how to do those. I don't think that needs to be explained um, further in detail. If you do have any questions, go ahead and comment in the video in um in the video's comments or get a hold of me by email. So let's go ahead and do this sequin half double crochet. It's pretty much the same actually as a sequin double crochet. So here I already started row eight. So I'm going to do a half double crochet here, half double crochet there. This isn't part of the pattern. I'm just going to show you really quick how to do this stitch. All right. So here's the stitch I want to put my sequin half double crochet in. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. I should have three loops. Now, for the sequin double crochet, we would be yarning over and pulling through two loops. But because this is a half double crochet, and usually you would just pull through all three, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna bring up our sequin now. There we go. And we're gonna pull it all the way up to where it can't go anymore. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's the sequin half double crochet. So that's what we would be doing for row six. Um, again, follow the written pattern instructions um, to know how many you make um, and how to do the increases. But for now, we are going to skip past these two rows and we're going to start on row eight. So row eight is again, just like, let's see, row eight, seven, six. So it's just like row five. We're just going to be double crocheting all the way across um, and the double crochets in the chain one spaces. So here, my Yarn got a little crazy there. I'm gonna go 
ahead and do that double crochet again. All right, I'm going to turn. I'm going to chain one and double crochet in the first double crochet. Then we're going to double crochet in the next chain one space. And then double crochet in the next double crochet. All right. So I think you get the idea. Again, follow the pattern instructions to know how to get to increase on uh, the corners. And go ahead and come back when we get to row nine. Row nine is going to be a little different. Super easy, but a little different. Um, and there's a little explanation for it. So come back when you're done. All right, so I'm back. We are back. I just finished row eight, which is the double crochet um, in the chain one and double crochet, the chain one space and the double crochets. Uh, we're gonna start row nine, but I wanted to point out one thing that will help you um, along the way from this point on. So this raglan is done in a three row repeat, which means um, the same three rows are just repeated over and over and over again. Um, and those rows are the sequin half double crochet, the chain one space, skip a stitch, and then the double crochet row, this one here and then the double crochet all the way across row. So those three, we are going to be continuing on from here on out. No no other um, double crochet sequin stitches, anything like that. It's just these three rows repeated all the way through. Now, what I wanted to point out to you on row nine, so technically we would be doing the sequin half double crochet row, right? But we're actually not, and this is actually going to be a lot easier than you think. But um, when you turn your work, do you see the problem already? <laughs> when you turn your work, your sequins are facing you, which means if we were to do sequin half double crochets on this row, they would be facing on the inside of the cardigan and not the outside which we don't want. I don't, I don't particularly, particularly want sequins scratching me while I wear this. So um, what we're going to do is just half double crochet around. So this is going to save you money on sequins um, and it's also going to make for a more comfortable cardigan. Um, so another part, what I'm trying to say is another part of the repeat is the sequin half double crochet the skip stitch, double crochet, and then the double crochet. And then the second part of the repeat is the plain half double crochet. One of these rows, one of these rows, and then it repeats all the way back to the sequin half double crochet. So the next time we are at a half double crochet row, we'll need to use our sequins. Again, Remember, we are increasing until the pattern doesn't tells us not to. Um, and that is when you reach, when you've increased your cardigan to your size. Um, but for this part, we are just going to um, increase um, until we have to split up in the different sizes. So let's go ahead and finish out rows 9 through 15 and come back. All right, so you now should have finished all the way up to row 15, which is a half double crochet row all around. This is what it looks like. And at this point is when the pattern starts breaking off into the different sizes. So this will be the end of part one of the crochet along. However, there's a few things that you wanna check before we can start on the next part next week. 
or if you're watching in the future, um, before you start on the next part, you're gonna wanna check these things. Number one is you're gonna wanna measure this back piece here. So this is what it looks like. Sorry that I don't have my stand. But you have the three long sides and the two short sides here. You're gonna wanna measure one of the long sides and make sure it comes out to 14 inches. That way we know we're on the right track. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna set this down and I'm just gonna go ahead and measure on camera. I measure from, here's the center stitch where my finger is. I measure from the stitch right to the right of that, all the way across. <clears throat> Two, here's the center stitch to the left stitch. And as you can see, that's 14 inches across. That's where we wanna be. Um, another measurement you're gonna to wanna to take is the measurement across here. And this should come to six and a half, or sorry, six. <laughs> Six inches. There we are. All right. Once you have those two measurements and you have confirmed that your measurements are correct and that your gauge is on point, that will be the end of our first week of the Betsy Cardigan crochet along. And you can go ahead and click the link in the description box um, to head to the next post and video um, if you're watching this in the future. If not, if you're watching this in present time during the crochet along, go ahead and wait till you get that, um, your email alert that the next part has been released next week. All right. Till then.